culture. Um, he had brown hair, which I thought meant that he would look good with me. Um, and he was shy, so I thought that meant that he was secretly sweet. And um, he wore a navy blue Tennessee Balls baseball cap every day. Um, and that was basically all I knew about him. Um, but I was a very serious student, and I also took my crush very seriously. I read every teen magazine that I could, and I took all the quizzes, and I tried to study up on how to get my crush's attention. Um, my friends and I called him like once a week, three-way calling, and tried to get him to like admit that he liked me, um, or whoever, I mean, it didn't have to be me, but anyway, um, he didn't seem to like take notice of me, and um, you know, at that age, it's like, you try to get someone's attention, um, based, you know, on not really actually speaking to them, right? Um, so I was very shy. Um, and that year, in English class, we had read The Diary of Anne Frank. And I was really inspired by the story. Um, not only because I think that <laughs> she's a really courageous person, and she was a very talented writer, and she told the story of, you know, the suffering that the Jews, um, went through during the Holocaust, but also because, I don't know if you remember the story, but Anne Frank had a crush also, and um, she had a crush on Peter, who was the son of the Van Dans, the other family, who was living with them in the annex, and she wrote about it in her journal, and you know, like the desire she had, and like, he just thought she was a little girl, and he wouldn't take her seriously, um, and uh, I think, I don't really know this is true, but I think throughout the course of the story, she, I mean, her life, um, she ended up, I mean, they ended up making out, okay, I think they ended up kissing. So I was like, oh my god, this is great, like she, I mean, she kind of like got what she wanted, and like she, not only that, but then she got her story published, I mean, this is really more than I know, but I was 12, um, but she like, she got her story published, and like everyone got to see that she got, kind of got her man, or whatever. Okay, just don't, don't judge me, okay? So, um, so, I was like, I'm gonna be like Anne Frank. Um, I'm gonna leave a notebook behind. Um, so I, I had like a real journal, but then I also created this fake journal. Um, and I, I filled it from cover to cover, and it was based on um, a pseudonym. Um, named Rainbow Gal, and she was kind of like Sasha Fierce, which is like Beyonce's alter ego, I don't know if you know about that, um, and she was like this really cool girl who wore like really cool outfits, and she was really outgoing and spunky, and she was like a tomboy, but she's also really hot, and um, she like, she didn't have parents, and in her entries, which I wrote like two or three a day, because I had to fill the whole journal, she, she was always like coming from a poetry reading, or like, going on a road trip or swimming with dolphins, and um, she just had one problem, and you can imagine what it was, she had a crush on someone with the initials M.B., Matthew Dolcher, um, and, but like he, she was so cool, but like he just didn't seem to notice her, and she was just like, that is so dumb. Um, and so I filled this journal, and I left it at the cliffhanger, you know, like, what am I going to do about this crush? And I took the journal with me to school. And I went to the science classroom where I knew Matthew um, had class because I had the class. Anyway, and I went to his desk and I put it in, in the cubby under the desk and I left the journal there in the hopes that he would like read it during class. And um, and he would like fall in love with this person and be like, who is this rainbow guy? I must know. And I don't really know if he ever read the story, um, I mean, read the journal. <laughs> um, but I did make him a birthday card. Um, and, and I signed it Rainbow Gal. And all that really did was, you know, make the sixth grade erupt with gossip and everyone was coming up to me being like, we know you're Rainbow Gal. Like, and like, he still didn't last me out or whatever. Um, and I might be going over my minute, but I just want to say, flash forward 13 years or whatever, and I'm in a relationship. And um, I was in, with this guy for like two years, like on and off, and he was really unavailable and like, uh, like, I don't want to be in a relationship, then he went on a road trip, and it was like really difficult for me. But I was like really in love with him, and I like wanted to have his babies, and I don't know why, but I just like loved this person so much, you know. Um, and 
you know, Valentine's Day happened, and he didn't do anything. I'm oh, sorry. Um, and he, like, he didn't do anything. He, like, sent me a text. And I was like, oh, my God. So I kind of confronted him about it. And he was like, you know, Anna, I love you. I don't want to break up, but um, I'm not in love with you. And so I was, like, crushed. And I went to the bathroom, and I was crying. And I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Like, maybe I brought this up too soon. Like, two years isn't too soon. I still had these feelings for me. Like, I shouldn't have even brought this up. I'm so messed up. And I caught myself in the mirror. And I remembered Rainbow Gal, and I thought about Anne Frank too. And I was like, um, you know what? Rainbow Gal would never stay with someone who wasn't really in love with her, and I'm not going to either.